Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Eleanor and today I want to talk about Time's Convert by Deborah Harkness. Now this is the fourth book in a series called The All Souls Trilogy um, by Deborah Harkness. So if you haven't first read the first three books, um, I would not recommend watching this video if you're really eager to read this series because I'll be talking about the fourth in this series and spoilers. <laughs> so this book kind of continues on from where we left off with the third book in this series, The Book of Life. Um, it continues on maybe a few months later or so, it doesn't quite matter, but it continues quite on. And it's set in two time zones and it's following three different perspectives. So the first perspective you have is Diana in the first person again, which is who you were following in the first three books. So it's Diana and Matthew and their two young children who are toddlers now. And it's also following Marcus back when he was human before he was first turned. And it's following his fiance, eh, Phoebe, and her transition into turning into a vampire. I actually struggled to get into this book for quite a bit because the whole first section when you're at Marcus's perspective back in 1762, um, it's very historical. Um, it's him trying to join the army in America and um, he's not been turned into a vampire yet. It's not part of the creature world. And for the whole first part of this book before he's changed into a vampire, it is just historical. And although it is interesting reading about Matthew and his history, it's not really something that I ever read. I don't read just straight up historical fiction, um, unless it's got a kind of speculative aspect or a fantastical aspect. And before he's changed into a vampire, it's just an ordinary young man eager to join the army. And I struggled with that, uh, reading those sections, just because it's not what I'd expected from the series so far. And um, it's just not something I really pick up myself. I did enjoy being back with Diana again and seeing her two young children access magic for the first time and then working with the congregation and seeing how these two young children as brightborn children, um, seeing how they develop into half vampires, half witches and it was fun and I kind of wish we had more from them. I really like Diana's perspective, I like the changes that have happened to her over the last few years in these books. I like how she's become a mother and I just like her perspective and I enjoy those aspects of the book because she's still very much the historian. She's still wanting to delve into the history of the people around her. And that's how you end up with Marcus's um, point of view back in the 1760s. Um, it's because Diana is questioning about his past and that's when Marcus starts to remember and that's when you have the flashbacks. So they are good. I, I do enjoy the flitting to and forth. I thought it was interesting, but I just struggled with it a little bit. The third perspective you have is Phoebe. So that's Marcus's um, fiancé, and he wants her to turn into a vampire so that they can live forever. So it was actually quite fun to see how this series does um, vampires and how they deal with a change, um, because in previous books you just kind of hear about it here and there so it's fun to follow from Phoebe's perspective to see what that actually entails and um, how the transformation actually works what she's got to learn how she feels differently and um, what it's like having like your master and how they go about feeding and things like that I don't know <laughs> I just thought it was quite interesting to see how uh, Deborah Harkness as the author chose to portray that and it was quite fun to get a first-hand perspective and an account of what that journey is like. Overall, I just thought the story lacked the same presence the other three books in this series did. There wasn't any high stakes, there wasn't any big action or adventure or big conflict going on. There wasn't. The conflict in the story is in a historical point of view with Marcus. And you know everything worked out okay because, you know, that's him telling his 
origin story. So it doesn't have the same kind of impact. You know Phoebe's going to be turned into a vampire, you know she's going to be with Marcus. You kind of know that's going to work out because this is like a kind of romance story. So you know that should be alright. And the tiny little bit of conflict that you see with um, the issue with Diana's two children um, is solved very quickly too. So my only critique really is that there wasn't really any point. Um, there wasn't really a lot going on. It's a fairly big book. You learn a lot. It's fun being with these characters again. But it just doesn't have the same feel to it. It's just very disconnected with the other books in the series, in my opinion. And I don't know if it's just because it's not just wholly from Diana's point of view anymore. And they're in the next stage of their life where they don't have the same challenges they did in the original trilogy. So I did enjoy this. Uh, it was fun, but it's definitely not my favourite in the trilogy. And I would definitely go back and reread the other books in the series way before picking this up again. Just because, in my opinion, not a lot happened. And it just didn't have the same feel to it. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Um, maybe you just are happy for happily ever after kind of romancey, just happy with supernatural romance being quite non-conflict. Maybe that's what you're happy with, but when I'm reading books about vampires, I kind of want more going on. And I also felt that there wasn't a lot of balance in this story. In the other three, um, you clearly had a lot of perspectives from um, and a lot of story building from vampires, from witches and from the demons and you had that balance of learning about all of them and having different things going on with them mixed in with the congregation. But in this book you barely touch on demons at all and there's not really any new witches involved either. It's just the, all the vampires and all the characters that we're already familiar with. The only new people you really meet are the ones from Marcus's past. And yeah, to me it just didn't seem like it expanded a whole lot on this world and this universe in the way that I was expecting and I was looking forward to. So yeah, I did enjoy this. Um, I did have fun reading it. I just struggled with it a bit and it wasn't quite what I was expecting. Deborah Harkness is continuing to write in this world and I'm looking forward to reading them. I will continue to pick them up and read them because they are fun. This wasn't quite five stars for me but it doesn't mean I'm not going to continue reading them because they are fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing what perspective her next book is, um, what story she tells from there. I'm looking forward to in the future hopefully having a book with the point of view of Galloglass. Um, he's one of my favourite characters in this series and he didn't really appear in this as much as I was hoping. <laughs> so I will be looking forward to that in the future. Let me know if you've read any of these books in this series and what you think of them. And them on hardback they're very heavy <laughs> let me know if you've read any of them and what you think of this series and yeah thank you for listening to my wee review <laughs> and i'll see you all in the next video goodbye